Good morning, friend. Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Becky Hernu, and today we are cooking up a bunch of freezer meals. We are making a bunch of dinners and desserts for my sister. She, this week, anytime, is going to give birth to her third baby. And I was thinking about this last night, that this is the third time you and I have made freezer meals for her together. We made them for her last two babies. So this is kind of fun that we are prepping a bunch of food for her so she does not have to think about dinners for the foreseeable future if she doesn't want to. Now I am basing this entire menu off of personal requests from her, things that I she knows that her two kids, her husband and her will enjoy to eat for the next foreseeable future. So in these two pans, we're gonna start with chili and taco soup. She requested both of these, and she wants these so that she can just dump these right into her crock pot and or stove and warm them up. And the awesome thing about both of these menus or items is that they have a lot of the same ingredients. And we're gonna be using up a ton of onions and peppers from last year's garden, and they're already diced up and chopped, so I don't even need to worry about doing that. I'm going to saute them just to give them a little bit more flavor. And both the taco soup and chili both need onions and peppers. So I'm just going to saute them together and then once sauteed we will put them in their individual bags for the freezer. That was a little bit of bacon grease I put in these just to add a little bit more flavor. And then in this pan, we are gonna brown up some ground beef. It is early. No one in my family is up yet except me. Josh did go ahead and get the dishwasher loaded for me last night. So I'm gonna take a few minutes here while these are sauteing to get the dishwasher unloaded so that as I cook today, I can just put stuff directly into the dishwasher. Normally I would have this already done before we get started, but it's very early in the morning and I did not get to it yet. I didn't want to waste precious time of me being in the kitchen without at least getting something going and cooking while then I do something else. So that is why I am doing this. I need to make a fresh pot of coffee. I haven't done that yet either. Here is my stack of recipes. I think we have 10 or 12 recipes in this stack. My goal is to try to get to every single one of them. We will see together how far we get. But for now, I know we at least have two going. And actually, last night I did just a little bit of prep, which I will show you what I did last night. So technically, I'm about to get my fourth one going here. So here's my recipe. And I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get out all my ingredients. And then this makes how many muffins? It makes 12. I have a 24 muffin tin. And so I'm gonna go ahead and double this recipe so that I can just fill that whole muffin tin up. So my sister has two girls and she is about to have her first boy, which is gonna be so fun. It is going to be my parents' fourth grandson and eighth grandbaby. I actually have to do the math now because there's so many of them. I did get butter out last night to come to room temperature on the counter, but this recipe calls for melted butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt two sticks of butter. We're gonna start with four eggs. Two cups of granulated sugar. Our melted butter.
real buttermilk. Vanilla. Mix this together. I ran out of flour in here and I ran out of flour in my big bucket. So I'm gonna go downstairs and get a bunch of flour so we can finish these muffins. We are back in business with flour. I need to add five cups of flour to this. I just added baking soda and salt. Now we're gonna mix this together. And that's basically our batter. Okay, this is done. I'm gonna scrape the sides down. And I forgot I was gonna turn this one batter into two different muffins. It's a nice, beautiful, thick batter. What I'm gonna do to turn this muffin mixture into two different muffins is I'm gonna take half the batter and put it into this bowl. And let's see, that looks like about half. I'm just eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is just where we're gonna be putting in add-ins. So the first one, because this is what they requested, is going to be our chocolate chips. And I do want to kind of See how many I'm gonna be putting in there. These are mini chocolate chips. I thought that my nieces would like that. So we'll get that in there. I think what I'm gonna use is my Danish dough whisk. I think this is gonna be easiest to mix those mini chocolate chips in. This smells so yummy. I have never made chocolate chip muffins before and I think these are gonna be a winner. So here, we officially have one of our batters done. This is my 24 muffin tin. I'm gonna spray it really well with some avocado spray so that they come out of the tins. Then I've got my muffin scoop here. I just checked the recipe and it says that we're supposed to bake these at 425, which I've never made muffins at that high of a temperature before, so I just adjusted the heat on my oven. I'm gonna try to evenly fill these. Did a pretty good job evenly distributing that batter. Now that we have 12 of our chocolate chip muffins made and in the tins, I'm gonna grab our other mix-in, and that is some blueberry muffins. So I thought that this batter, because it's basically just like a vanilla batter, it would go really well. I'm looking for my scissors. A knife will work. The blueberries will go really well with this batter. And I just have some frozen blueberries here, and I'm probably gonna put half, this is a 16 ounce bag. Yeah, I'm gonna put about half of those in there. Well, let me stir that together and see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. I don't want to stir it too much because that blue is already starting to incorporate. But I do want to get those berries mixed in, so that's good. So we're going to go with that. I just had the thought that because those blueberries are frozen, hopefully the cook time on both of these is relatively the same. I think it should be fine. The frozen blueberries are stiffening up this batter just a little bit. The last freezer meal time we spent in the kitchen together, I made a blueberry oatmeal muffin. Those were so good. We loved them, but this is more of kind of just a traditional blueberry muffin. These blueberries have a lot more volume than the chocolate chip ones did, so I might have to get another muffin tin out to finish baking these in another tin. Because I don't want to fill these up anymore. I knew I saw 375 somewhere. 
Once we get these in the oven, we're supposed to reduce the temperature. I need to get that cookie sheet out of here to 375. So I wasn't crazy that, that I saw 375 somewhere. So I'm gonna turn that off. 375 and start. Our ground beef is perfect. You see, can see all those nice brown bits and our peppers and onions are done. So I'm gonna turn the heat off so that this can, oh, you know what I should add actually before I turn the heat off that is I'm gonna go ahead and saute the garlic. And these are the onions and peppers for both the chili and the taco soup. So I'm gonna put four pucks in there and let that saute. This is super lean ground beef because I bought it from a local farmer, so I don't need to drain it. That's why it was okay that I added bacon grease to it to begin with. So now what I'm gonna start with is adding a lot of chili powder because this is chili, and I am doubling this recipe. This is smoked paprika. I'm just gonna add a little bit of chipotle powder, coriander, cumin and I'm gonna mix this in and I'm gonna let this cook in the oil just a little bit to help bloom those flavors. A lot of the flavor compounds that are in spices are actually fat soluble so if you toast them and you cook them in a little bit of the fat first they're gonna really intensify their flavor because they're gonna be able to infuse into the whole dish. That's why I'm taking the time to do this step. Even though this is going to be a dump and go crock pot meal for my sister, or she'll dump it into a pan on the stove just to heat it up. I wanna make sure that we're maximizing the flavor as much as we can. And I have the time to do this step, so I'm gonna do it. Do I always do it? No, if I don't have time, but I have time today. So it's gonna work out just perfect. Now that this has been toasting for a few minutes, I'm gonna turn the heat off my ground beef and my heat off my peppers and onions because we're gonna get this bagged up and I want this to cool down a little bit before we put it into our bags. While I'm waiting for my beef and onion mixture to cool down, I've taken the chocolate chip muffins out of the oven. The blueberry muffins did take longer to cook because of the frozen blueberries. So that's something to note that I probably should have put them <laughs> in two separate pans, but that's okay. I was able to take out the chocolate muffins and the blueberry muffins have about two more minutes left in the oven. So while those are cooking, what I'm doing is writing labels for my taco soup and for my chili base. What I have done is wrote on the bag what the crock pot directions are. So four to six hours on low, everything's gonna be cooked. It's just a matter of marinating all the flavors together. And then I'm also not gonna be adding the broths to the bags, cause that's gonna take up a lot of volume that I don't want to be taken up in these bags cause I only have one gallon size freezer bags. If I had two gallon size freezer bags, I could add the broth or if you have broth powder, like a better than bullion paste or something like that, the cubes, you could go ahead and add those. And then just mark on your bag how much water to add once you go to cook this. But I'm gonna gift my sister those cans of broth. So for the chili, she needs to add two cups of broth and one cup of beer, which is optional. And if she wants to just substitute broth for the beer, she can but I'm just gonna go ahead and write it as the recipe is intended. So four to six hours on low or two to three hours on high. And then of course she can pop that right into, let's see, I have to add the broth here. Write it onto the stove and just get it boiling and cooking if she wants to do that. And then I put chili and I put that it's beef chili and I also put the date on here. And we are gonna go ahead and grab those blueberry muffins out of the oven. And then I've got all my cans here so we can start draining and rinsing some of the beans for the chili and for the taco soup. But I think my blueberry muffins are done. I do not want those to overcook, so I wanna get those out of the oven first. And these are beautiful. So perfect. These are gonna be fantastic. They puffed up beautifully. They are nice and golden brown. Yeah, those are cooked all the way through. 
So we can have our blueberry muffins meet the same fate as the chocolate chip muffins. I think this would be a fantastic recipe to make mini muffins, like the mini blueberry muffins or the mini chocolate chip muffins. I would definitely try that next time. One of my blueberry muffins may have broken on the way out, <laughs> and so I've not eaten breakfast. I think I'm gonna go sit down Mm. Enjoy this blueberry muffin with a cup of coffee, and we'll be back to assemble all these meals. Mm. Mm -hmm. Here is the jar lineup for the chili. So I need to get all of these open. All these tomato products are homegrown. These beans, I did not grow, but I plan to grow this next coming year. I can't find my can opener, so I'm just gonna use the end of a knife here to pop these, you hear how beautiful that pop is. That seal is perfect. Now this recipe calls for kidney beans. I don't have kidney beans, so I'm gonna use white beans and I'm gonna go rinse and drain these. Now I'm gonna take my ground beef and divide half of it into one bag and the other half into the other bag. One jar of diced tomatoes with the juice. One can of crushed tomatoes. My whole family is now up and they've been enjoying the muffins. And if you were with me yesterday, I did a bunch of breakfast meal prep and Josh enjoyed a breakfast burrito and a blueberry muffin for breakfast this morning. And it was quite delicious. So here is our onion garlic pepper mixture. And let me tell you friend, this stuff smells incredible. And so this mixture is for four recipes. So I just divided it into quarters. And then I'm gonna take each quarter and get it into our bag here. This is for the chili. And then there are a couple more ingredients we need to add to these bags, one of them being some brown sugar, which I have not gotten out yet. Okay. We're just gonna put two tablespoons of brown sugar in each bag. And I think that is it. I need to consult my recipe. I have yet to season either of these bags, so I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and some pepper in each one. We officially have two meals done. They just need the beer and broth. And that fit perfectly in this one gallon bag. So I'm glad I decided not to try to fit the broth or beer in this bag. I want these to freeze flat in my freezer, so I'm going to put them on this cookie sheet, and I'm gonna go pop this in the freezer since everything is room temperature here. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and get my taco soup made up real quick. But first I'm gonna get these jars in the dishwasher. I can actually go ahead and pop my jars for my taco soup real quick. I can get these rinsed and drained while I'm over here. And I think I will rinse out all my jars and get those ready for the dishwasher all at the same time. So first I've got two jars of corn and these are homegrown black beans, which I'm really proud of. The recipe calls for Rotel, which is tomatoes and peppers together. I have diced tomatoes with no peppers, so I'm gonna get this in here with the juice, it says. Mm. 
and this is the last of my diced tomatoes. So I'm gonna have to make more of those for next year. And to substitute the Rotel, I'm gonna use these diced tomatoes plus a couple jars of diced green chilies. Our onion and pepper mixture, plus tons of garlic. Coriander, cumin, smoked paprika, a little bit of chipotle powder. The next ingredient is a half a block of cream cheese, which I'm gonna put in each bag. I did go with a convenience item here. I got two rotisserie chickens the other day knowing that I was going to be making this. And yesterday I went ahead and removed the chicken from the bones and we're gonna use this chicken in this taco soup. And then I do need to make up some chicken broth with the leftover bones. And I might actually start that at the end. The very last thing I do today might be starting a bunch of chicken broth. But we need chicken for another recipe and I thought that rotisserie chicken would just make life a little bit easier on this day. I'm just gonna top this bag off with this chicken. The recipe said about four cups or so. I'm gonna go wash my hands. And now all this needs is the chicken broth when my sister opens it up. And everything in here is fully, fully cooked. So if she just wants to warm this up on the stove, that's all she's gonna have to do, or I'm gonna have to do, because one of these will be for her. One of them will be for me. That fit there perfectly. I'm glad I had the idea, again, of not putting that broth in there. But if you have bouillon cubes or powder or better than bouillon paste, just put that in there right now and then all you'll have to do when you open it is add the water. All right, so two more meals completely done. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on this cookie sheet. The reason I'm putting these on a cookie sheet is because my freezer has slats in it and I don't wanna put this bag with liquid in my freezer with the slats because then it could freeze in the slats and then be hard to get out once it's frozen. Four dinners completely done. The next recipe, we need fresh basil and I have a bunch of it growing in the grow room right now. So I'm gonna do two things at once. I'm gonna to top my basil so it'll encourage it to grow bushier and we're gonna get some free basil out of the grow room. So everywhere I pick the top off, new branches are gonna start growing on the inside of those branches. This next recipe is gonna to come together really quickly and it's what we need this basil for because I did a little bit of prep yesterday. Yesterday I spent quite a bit of time in the kitchen as well doing some breakfast meal prep like I mentioned earlier because today and tomorrow it's supposed to be super, super rainy. And no, yesterday and today it's supposed to be super, super rainy. And tomorrow it's supposed to be beautiful. So I wanna spend all tomorrow and the weekend outside. And so I wanted to get as much meal prep done today as I can. And so after I spent all morning doing the breakfast meal prep, I decided to go ahead and get some red sauce made for this next recipe. So let me bring you back to yesterday while I rinse and get all these jars in the dishwasher. We've used two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 jars of homegrown, mostly a few things like the beans, the white beans were store-bought, but most of this stuff in these jars was either homegrown or locally sourced from local farmers that I bought in season, jarred up last summer, and we're enjoying now. I love when I can open a bunch of jars because it means that all my efforts were worth it. 
So let me show you what I did yesterday to make this next recipe go really, really quickly to assemble. The first thing I did was brown up a few pounds of ground sausage so that that could be the base of our sauce. And then I added two cups of shredded carrots and a bunch of onions from last year's garden. My sister, who I'm cooking all these meals for, always adds carrots to her red sauce to add some sweetness without having to add sugar. So I have a lot of shredded carrots in my freezer still from last year's garden. And so I thought this would be a great way to add one, a little extra veggie, and two, some yummy sweetness to this red sauce with again, not having to add some sugar. So now I'm gonna add quite a bit of garlic, salt, pepper, some different herbs, and then some crushed tomatoes. We are officially out of all the marinara sauce that I made from last year, but I still have lots and lots of crushed tomatoes. So we can get those in there with some homemade tomato paste. And I'm gonna let this simmer for a good few hours while I just relax so that tomorrow it'll be ready for us when we need to make this lasagna. This is the sauce that we just made up last night. And it really was very nice that I was able to get to that and just let it simmer on the stove for a few hours. And I didn't really have to take up stove space today to do that. So that's really nice. But next year I plan to have a lot more of my homemade marinara sauce. So we don't have to go through that effort to make a lasagna. So here I have a big tub of ricotta cheese and now I'm gonna add some shredded Parmesan cheese to that. And I think I'm just gonna roughly run my knife through this basil. It's obviously very young, very tender, very delicious basil. So I don't need to chop it up too much. I almost bought basil at the store when I went to the store and I thought, you know what? I think I could kill two birds with one stone on that. I could harvest and enjoy basil for this dinner. And then I could also top my basil to encourage it to be bushier throughout the growing season. So that kind of worked out perfect there. Get that in there. And then I am not gonna add eggs. I used to always add eggs to my ricotta mixture when I would make my lasagna with ricotta. But I've been making a baked ziti recently where you don't add eggs and the ricotta just stays really soft and delicious and tender. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with this one. So I just added salt and pepper. And now all we're gonna do to this is mix this up. And then I also, when I pre-shredded the cheese for what I prepped yesterday, I pre-shredded a bunch of mozzarella for today as well. So I don't even have to shred cheese to make this happen. If you wanted to add an egg to this to firm up the ricotta cheese, you could at this point. Okay, so there's our filling. I'm gonna make two lasagnas, one for my sister, one for my family. I'm gonna start by adding sauce to the bottom. I like to make sure I add a good amount of sauce to the base layer so that the pasta doesn't stick to the bottom of the baking dish. We're gonna layer this up just like you normally would any lasagna. We've got our red sauce, and then we're gonna add some noodles. We're gonna add our ricotta, some really yummy mozzarella cheese, and then more red sauce, and then so on and so forth until you fill up your casserole dish. Now with this one, I am not really following a recipe per se. I'm just going off what I have on hand and what I know from making lasagnas many, many times in my life. And one thing I'm doing here is I am using just regular lasagna noodles that I already had in my house. They're not special no boil noodles. I'm not boiling them. I have found them to cook up just fine when I don't use any sort of special noodle for it. But I really do like the no boil noodles. I just didn't have those, so I am using what I have on hand. And we're gonna get these just layered up until the pans are completely filled. And just like that, we have two more meals done. So convenient and easy. I'm gonna to top this with cheese. I always like to have the top layer of cheese so that when you pull it out of the oven, it has that like golden, delicious, cheesy crust on the top. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use the rest of that cheese. And this is all completely cold, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this wrapped up for my sister, and I'm just gonna pop this right in the freezer. 
This one, because this is my dish and it's a glass dish, it comes with a snap lid. There we go. I love these containers because they have a nice snappable lid. And then this one for my sister, get this on it. And there we go, just like that. We have two more meals done, one for me, one for her. Let me come back and I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna make next. I think I wanna make the cookies next. I just did some dishes, cleaned off the counter, reset the kitchen, and now I'm gonna go through my recipes and we're gonna get going on a couple of the baking items. So we finished the taco soup, the chili, the blueberry and chocolate chip muffins, lasagna, which I didn't have a recipe for, I just made that up. We still need to cook this one. So the one we're gonna do next are lactation cookies. And this is a recipe my sister sent me, she wanted these. The recipe says you can freeze the dough raw and then bake them as needed. And you know what I should probably do? I should text her, because I was thinking maybe I would bake half of them and have half of them already baked for her in the freezer so that she didn't have to bake them or if she would rather have the cookie dough. I'm gonna text her and ask her, but we're gonna make those next. And those have some special ingredients to help support mothers. And so I'm going to also make just a chocolate chip oatmeal cookie for my nieces and nephews and my brother-in-law. So I think that's what we're gonna do next. I've already washed out my mixer and these have a lot of the same ingredients. I think what we'll do is we'll actually start with the oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. And then I'm not gonna bake any of the oatmeal chocolate chips. I'm just going to have the cookie dough. Maybe I will bake some for our house. I'm gonna bake some for our house. And that way my sister or brother, my brother-in-law could bake them too, could bake the cookies whenever they want cookies. I just washed this bowl out. There was a little bit of water left in there. So I'm just gonna dry that off. Get a little bit of the flour off the mixer here. Okay. Oatmeal chocolate chip cookies are probably my favorite cookie. So I did take a bunch of butter out last night to come to room temperature because I knew that we were gonna be making these. So we're gonna start with three fourths cup of butter, which in the US is one and a half sticks of butter. Next, we're gonna add one and a half cups of brown sugar. Oh, you know what I need to do first? I need to mix the butter and sugar together. Salt. Now I'm gonna add my all-purpose flour baking powder, and I'm gonna mix that baking powder in with the salt a little bit, and the flour. I have some candied walnuts I wanna use up. I'm gonna add those in there, and my oats, along with the chocolate chips. And there we have our cookie dough. So I'm preheating the oven again so that I can bake a couple of these off for my family. I'm still waiting to hear back if my sister wants me to bake her cookies or not. And she obviously can eat these cookies too, but I thought it would be nice if she had her own cookies because she texted me the recipe she wanted me to make. And then my nieces and brother-in-law have their own cookies that they can have as well. And these can go really close together because this is the cookie sheet that I'm gonna throw in the freezer. And I'll just freeze these raw. I love having frozen cookie dough in the freezer. So when we need just a little sweet treat and we don't wanna go through the effort of having to make a whole thing of cookies, we can just pull a couple out and bake them. And that way we can also bake just a few at a time instead of having to bake like the entire 
batch of cookies. Typically though, what I do when I bake cookies from frozen is I reduce the temperature by about 25 degrees or so. So I typically bake frozen cookie doughs at about 100, or not 100, 325 degrees for the required amount of time. So now we're gonna bake off just a few cookies for us. These are all gonna go in the freezer for my sister's family. And now I'm gonna flip the page over to the next one, which has a lot of the same ingredients, except it has a couple extra added ones that are supposed to help mom. So let's see here. She has not texted me back yet on whether she wants me to cook these or not but my oven will be preheated if she wants me to cook them. So I will be able to put those in the oven if she wants me to cook them. So that's eight tablespoons, I think, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so same amount of butter and then four tablespoons of coconut oil. To that, I'm gonna add the sugar. This recipe calls for white sugar. I'll cream the butter and sugar together next. Vanilla, one whole egg, and then one egg yolk. So now we're gonna add the dry ingredients, and this is where some of the special ingredients come into play. So first, this is not anything out of the ordinary. We've got our all-purpose flour. Now I'm gonna add three tablespoons of ground flax five tablespoons of brewer's yeast. I had to go and get this online because I didn't think I would be able to find this at the store. Maybe if I went to the health food store, but I didn't think about that till just now. Cinnamon, baking powder, baking soda. I'm gonna mix this together a little bit. Now I'm gonna add three cups of oats. and chocolate. And those are the chocolate chip cookies for my sister. I'm gonna have to make sure I keep them separate because they look very, very similar. I grabbed a different cookie sheet so I don't get mixed up. This is gonna be my sister's cookies. I love a cookie scoop when it comes to scooping out cookies. Josh and I were married for four years before I finally decided to buy my cookie scoops and I have no regrets. I have three different sizes now at this point. I've got a tablespoon, a two tablespoon, and then my bigger scoop that I use for muffins is just one of those little tools in the kitchen that makes the task just that much easier and that much more enjoyable. Two cookie doughs done. I did not hear from my sister, so I'm just gonna pop all of these in the freezer for now. I just got word from my sister that she wants dough. So that was perfect that I went ahead and I froze that dough and I did not cook them. I'm really glad that that was the option I chose, which makes sense because she could always cook them, but you can't uncook them. So now we are going to start on the Parmesan chicken. This is a family favorite. And last time I made this, the, it ended up in the freezer and then we had the freezer disaster. So we never actually got to enjoy this. So we're gonna make this next. I still have a stack of recipes we are gonna be making. So we're just chucking along here. I do need to get some chicken out and we are going to need to fry this chicken up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I think while I'm gonna be preparing the raw chicken for the Parmesan chicken, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do and just prepare the chicken for the different marinated meats we're gonna be making. So I just poured myself another cup of coffee because it is time for the second cup of coffee. So we've got a bunch of marinated meats. I think there's four. No, we're doing three marinated meats. And then we're going to do a dump and, grow, a dump and go Tuscan crock pot chicken, which sounds fantastic. So that needs a little bit of prep work. So I think 
if I'm gonna deal with the raw chicken, I might as well just get it all dealt with and then we can move on to the next thing right here. So these are the marinated meats my sister requested. I also asked her if she wanted beef or chicken and what cuts a chicken and she said her family prefers chicken breast. So that is what we're gonna be making all these marinated meats with. I probably would normally, I mean, I normally use chicken thighs, but we're just gonna go at chicken breast because that's what she requested and that's what I got here. So I need one, two, three, four bags times two because I'm gonna do one of each, so one for my sister and one for us. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a second and label all of these. I'm gonna put the date on it and then I am going to cut our chicken up. I also did get the dishwasher going, so that is currently going. She requested pineapple jalapeno chicken. This recipe is so good. I love having marinated meats in my freezer, and my favorite thing to do with this is throw it on the grill, whether it's winter, summer, fall, or spring. And I love having just cooked grilled chicken in my fridge for easy, easy, lunch, breakfast, dinner, whatever. I am someone that likes to eat salads for breakfast, so I love to have chicken grilled in my fridge so I can have a salad for breakfast if I want. She also requested honey mustard. That is one of our favorites. And what I could have done is I could have got chicken thighs and chicken breast for this instead for Josh and I to have thighs, but I didn't think about that, I just got chicken and that will be just fine. And then the last one is chicken teriyaki for the marinades. And then the last one that's gonna go into a freezer bag is going to be the dump and go Tuscan chicken, which sounds delicious. I've never made this one before. For the Tuscan chicken, I'm gonna go ahead and put the crock pot cooking directions on here. My sister's husband loves to grill and they have a Blackstone, so I'm not gonna put any cooking directions on the marinated meats because she requested that and she knows how she's gonna cook it. If I had to guess, he's my brother-in-law is gonna go ahead and put that on the Blackstone. But because the Tuscan chicken recipe is new, I want her to have the cooking directions and I want myself to have the cooking directions right here. So it's gonna be four to six hours on low or two to three hours on high. So what I'm gonna to do to prepare this chicken is first I'm gonna open each one of these bags so that as soon as I prep it, I can just put the chicken into the individual bags. I'm going to evenly distribute this chicken throughout these six bags. And then the ones that I'm not gonna be using right away, I will go ahead and just pop them back in the fridge until we come back to them where we're gonna actually make the marinades and put the marinades on these. And the way that I like to cut my chicken breast when I prepare it for cooking is I like to cut them in half lengthwise so it's not just one big piece of chicken. I find that especially when you cook it on the grill, especially with chicken breasts, you're less likely to have it dry out on you because it's a smaller cut, so you can cook it a lot quicker and you don't have the thin end that gets cooked and done a lot quicker than the, the bigger end and have half the chicken breast completely dry before the big end is done. So I just like to do that. That's something that I like to take the little extra time and do that so that when I go to cook it, it's just prepped and ready to go for me. Okay, a couple more sips of this coffee and then I'm gonna get into this chicken. So I realized part way through processing this chicken that I don't quite have enough chicken to do all the recipes I wanted. So the one that did not make the cut is the teriyaki chicken. And then the Parmesan chicken, I'm gonna adapt with the rotisserie chicken that I have in my fridge so that we can still make that one. Normally, I make that with chicken breast and I pan sear it, 
but I didn't have enough to get these ones and my sister requested these ones. So I wanna make sure that I'm able to deliver on the ones that she requested since I asked her, what do you want? So the first two right here are going to be the Tuscan chicken. And we're gonna start by adding one block of cream cheese to each one of these bags. And this is going to be served over pasta or over mashed potatoes or rice. The recipe that I found online gave a bunch of different options on what to serve this with. The next thing I'm gonna do is chop up some artichokes and I did drain these, but I don't want these full big artichokes going in there. So we're just gonna give them a nice dice. One jar or can per recipe. And then each bag is gonna get a jar of sun-dried tomatoes. I did drain off most of that oil. And the recipe called for a shallot, which I forgot to grab at the store when I was there. So I'm just gonna substitute each recipe is gonna get half of a yellow onion. So I'll just cut this in half and slice it thinly. And I think that will taste just fine. I think I'm gonna leave them kind of longer slices too. Each bag is gonna get garlic, basil salt that I made this summer. I think that will go well with that. Oregano. And one cup of broth. I just made up two bags of spinach. These have two heaping handfuls of spinach in them. The spinach goes along with the Tuscan chicken. So the Tuscan chicken will sit in the crock pot and cook for anywhere from three to five hours, depending on if you cook it on low or slow. About 20 minutes before you serve it, you're gonna put the spinach in. I almost put the spinach in with this, but I was like, you know what? I think the spinach is gonna get way overcooked that way. So this recipe just has two bags and then all you have to do is cook up a pasta or mashed potatoes or whatever you want to, or you could just eat it just like that and serve it with that. So now that we got that done, let's move on to the jalapeno pineapple chicken, which I haven't made in a long time. And it is one of our favorites. The pineapple chicken is gonna to come together really easy. I'm gonna go ahead and make the marinade right in the blender. I've got my chicken here ready to go. I'm gonna start with two sugar rush peach peppers because that's what I had in my freezer, but if you have jalapenos, that's what the original recipe is written to use. Now I just put a couple pucks of ginger. I'm gonna put a couple pucks of garlic. Soy sauce, about a quarter cup. Oil, honey. I have one jar of pineapple in pineapple juice. And I'm gonna put all of that right in there. I'm gonna use some basil salt because I think that would just be really delicious. Pepper. And there's our marinade. We can taste this. Just to make sure. So good. I put a little extra ginger in there. That is so good. Oh my goodness, okay, I'm excited for that one. So now all we need to do is pour half of it in one bag and the other half in the other bag. Okay, one more recipe done. The way that I use my freezer meals is I almost use it as like menu planning on the days where I don't have much brain power to think about what should I be making for dinner. If I think about it in the morning or the night before, then I can just pull something out, let it thaw in the refrigerator, and it doesn't take much mental energy because I know that I have a few options I can pull from, from the freezer. So this is the last marinade we're getting to today. It's honey mustard chicken, and I will link this recipe and of course all the recipes that I am making today down below if you wanna try any of them out yourself. So now the marinades are done and the dump and go Tuscan chicken's done, we're gonna move on to our Parmesan chicken and I need breadcrumbs for this and I don't have any, but I do have some sourdough loaves 
from Josh's birthday. These were some leftover pieces of bread and I had thrown them in the freezer. And then last night I pulled them out of the freezer so that I could blend them up and we can use these as breadcrumbs today. So for the Parmesan chicken, you line your baking sheet with Parmesan cheese. Normally I would sear chicken for this, but I've got the rotisserie chicken. So we're going to, for the first time, make Parmesan chicken using rotisserie chicken and I'm excited to see how well we like this. Now I thought, I originally was only gonna do two pans of this, but I have so much rotisserie chicken left, I thought I might be able to get away with getting three pans done, so that's what we're gonna do on this day. I can't believe I've never thought to make this Parmesan chicken recipe with rotisserie chicken. That saves a tremendous step. I'm curious to see how well it cooks up. We're gonna have one of those for dinner tonight. So in this pot, we're going to make our white yummy pasta sauce because we serve this Parmesan chicken with egg noodles. But you could serve it, I guess, if you wanted, you could serve it over mashed potatoes or cauliflower if you want a low carb option. That would work really well too. I wasn't planning on making three of them, but I had enough chicken to make three, so that's what we're gonna do. So I just put three sticks of butter in my pot, and over here, I'm gonna get going on some taco meat. My sister requested just plain taco meat so that she can kind of fix it up however her family likes, whether they turn it into burritos or quesadillas or taco salad or whatever it might be. So I have two pounds of ground beef here. We're gonna get these going. This is gonna be really easy to get this one pulled together. Get that cooking there. The Parmesan chicken that we're making was the first meal I ever made Josh. And so you know how there's that marry me chicken recipe that's kind of there's a bunch of different adaptations going around online. Well, this is what we should call, Josh and I should call Marry Me Chicken because it's so good. I think it helped him fall in love with me. <laughs> so we're just gonna cook this up here. And then the butter is almost melted. Now I'm gonna add some flour and we're gonna begin to build our roux. Now we're gonna add our milk to create our sauce. So this ground beef is almost done. We've got some nice brown color to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get going on seasoning it up. Again, I'm not gonna drain this because it's so lean. I have some taco seasoning here. I'm gonna add a little extra cumin, a little extra smoked paprika, coriander, pepper, and salt. I just turned the stove off because you can see how our sauce is thickened up nicely. So now we're gonna add our Parmesan cheese and then our Swiss cheese. So that's a little unique thing about this recipe is that it uses Swiss cheese to make the sauce. It adds a fantastic flavor that most people don't expect. Three big handfuls of that. My dogs will pick up the cheese that I dropped. So the stove is off. Both stoves are off. I've got my taco meat off as well, and I'm just gonna stir this in and let this cheese melt. Swiss cheese is really stringy, so this makes a fantastic, fantastic sauce. So typically, instead of putting the rotisserie chicken over top of that Parmesan in the casserole dish, you would sear your chicken with salt and pepper on the stove. You didn't need it to be all the way cooked because you would put it on top of the cheese, and then you would top it with the sauce, and then you bake it in the oven, until it's like ooey and gooey and bubbly and the breadcrumbs that you put on the top get crusty and crunchy and delicious. And then you serve this over top of just good old fashioned egg noodles. And usually I serve it with roasted broccoli. Now the rotisserie chicken on this was really good. Huge time saver, 
very convenient. We do prefer it with the seared chicken, but this was a great way for me to use up this rotisserie chicken that I actually was planning on making another recipe, but I never got to it. And so this ended up working out just perfect. And so future though, I will probably make it with this seared chicken. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and package up these muffins because all these muffins are going to my sisters other than the ones we've already eaten on this day. And I'm happy to announce my sister is home safe with the baby. And last night I got texts from my sister saying that her whole family is loving the muffins, which makes all this work on this day worth the effort. Friend, we got it done. <laughs> You can put a fork at me, I am done. I am pooped. That was a fantastic day. It's not even one o'clock. So that is the benefit of getting up early and just getting in the kitchen and just getting it done. That is with interruptions too. So I am very, very, very happy with what we got done today. So let me kind of recap what we got done. The majority of this is going to my sister. Well, about half of it. So here we have two chilies. One will be for me, one will be for my sister. We have two taco soups. These are chicken taco soups. These two meals and these two meals here are for the crock pot. This is the Tuscan chicken. And then over here we have a couple things for the grill. We have our jalapeno pineapple. And then here we have our honey mustard chicken. So those are gonna be for the grill. We've got ground beef, because my sister asked for that in taco meat form. So that will make an easy dinner. And then for my sister's family, a bunch of chocolate chip cookies. And then these are the chocolate chip oatmeal cookies that are particularly for my sister. And I guess I'm saying that she requested some of these, but all of these were requested by her. And then here we've got lasagna, one for me, one for her. I'm gonna go ahead and gift my sister all of these because my niece is the one that requested these chocolate chip muffins and we have been snacking on them. So the rest of these are gonna to go to my sister. And then here we've got two of the Parmesan chicken for me, one for my sister. So I don't even know, how many meals is that total? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 dinner bases. So like the base of the dinner, plus obviously like the taco meat, that's gonna need a little bit more work with tortillas or chips or whatever it might be, but at least the protein is done. In all honesty, I have a sink full of dishes. The dishwasher literally just finished. So I'm gonna open this a little bit so it can dry. And then I will unload this and get this into the dishwasher, but I'm not gonna be doing that <laughs> right now. I think I am done for a little bit. I'm gonna get all of this in the freezer. I've had these in the refrigerator as I have been making them so that they're nice and cold and then I can pop them in my freezer and they will be in my freezer. So a couple things when I bring meals to people is I always like them to be in disposable. I am gonna be picking up a bag of disposable utensils and some paper plates so my sister doesn't have to think about doing as many dishes. That was one thing that was a huge blessing when I was in postpartum was not only the meal, but I did use some disposable utensils and plates for the first two weeks just because I didn't want to do dishes. <laughs> and so I'm going to do that for her. I'm also going to pick up some chips and a thing of cornbread, like a box of cornbread so she can make that on the night she has chili. I will bring a couple things like some bag cheese so that they can sprinkle cheese over the taco soup and the chili if they want. I'll probably drop off some sour cream and I'll try to make sure that I have some accompaniments to go with these if she decides to have these in somewhat of the near future. I'll probably talk to her about that and just make sure she has what she needs in order to finish out these meals if she wants them. Or if when we do our meal train, if she doesn't wanna use these right away, then she can pull these out later. So she's got two young kids and she's about to have her third. So I don't want her to have to worry about cooking. And I really enjoy spending time in the kitchen. So it was fun that I was able to hang out with you and not only fill my sister's freezer, but I am going to have quite a few meals on hand on nights that I don't want to cook or I don't have the energy to cook or I just don't want to make the kitchen messy. So all these recipes will be linked down below if you enjoyed this and you want to see how I made all of the breakfast meal prep for my sister. I will pop that video right here. You can go enjoy it between now and the next upload. I'll just pop another video down here for you to enjoy. Thank you for being here. If you're new, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you along. If you're 
returning. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for being you. I'm gonna get all of these goodies out into the freezer and I will see you next time. Bye friend.